Okay, guys. So I've had a lot of requests for a video on updating. Um, I haven't actually done the update till today. I haven't had need to. Um, I have one of the testers units and the firmware version I was on, which is very similar to the one you had, was older. Uh, and it worked perfect for me. So why bother updating? Now, I'm one of those guys, if it works, I ain't going to mess with it. Because, I mean, that's just the way I am. So anyway, so I have this other unit. This is not my testers unit. Uh, this is the same unit you guys have. So we're going to look at this from exactly the same thing as to what you guys have. So when you do the update on this, I take my batteries out. And there's one very valid reason, and I'll tell you that right now. When you do the update, it's going to come back with a low battery voltage of like 4.6 and a high of like 4.9 that's over the voltage we have this unit won't turn on with batteries in it after you do the update so i just take them out to begin with no reason to have them in there so i'm going to plug in my usb cable and the unit's going to start uh, this already has the update on it mind you so and i'm going to show you this website as well we're going to do it another screen i've already have the updater tool uh uh, where is it at? NV Update Tool. And I'm going to put a link of this in the description of this video um, so you guys have it. Uh, first thing we got to do, as you can see, is asking to verify the UID. And you've got to type that in, or at least I do. So I'm going to go here. Oop. I'm going to go to the middle icon, which looks like the Dark Knight. I'm going to go all the way to the end and hit that I. And right there, you're going to see CPU UID. I'm thinking we can see that, right? There we go. That's better. So CPU UID, you use your first two groups of numbers. Now, I already have, of course, right there it is, zero, zero. I mean, those are my numbers. Um, let's hit verify. It's going to come back and say UID is genuine, blah, blah, blah. You're going to want to download your drivers. Now, of course, you've got Windows X64 with drivers. You've got windows x32 with drivers you need to know what kind of machine you're using you got a linux based machine and you got a mac now the mac is beta right so it works but it is a beta version let's just go with that and leave it there now when you download this i'm gonna go ahead and download it even though i already have it if it'll let me download it because i already have it there it goes it's working i have great internet super super slow computer so bear with me sometime today anyway all right so i don't have time to wait for this <laughs> um let's go in here let's go to downloads uh how about favorites downloads and it is going to drop that updater in here right there it is now you're going to want to extract all that oh there's downloading you want to extract all that now i extracted it to a documents file under ufpv under firmware and my updater and you can see it here so you've got all these files and I have two NV14 updater NV14 updater with driver that is the one I chose so I took the, the with driver I ran it and here you can see update tool has started right now it's trying to detect this this controller but it's not going to as you can see on the screen of the controller you have firmware update let's click on this and see what happens uh oh it just got stuck in a bootloader mode checking for updates it's not gonna find any updates on mine because I just updated it right but let's update it again anyway so everybody was like oh crossfire 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 control for the micro TX well look here here it is let's click on that let's hit download firmware now it's downloading now it looks like it just stopped what do we do now and I've had a couple guys who say, oh, it's not working. They unplug it. Well, of course, you just wiped out your firmware you had. It's not going to work. Then they can't do this because, you know, they're freaking out a little bit, whatever the case might be, and they download FlySky, which rewrites the SD card. You can see that you can imagine the issues they have then. So I'm going to hit Update TX. I'm going to hit it one more time. 
Oh, there it is. Now, the only thing that bothers me is that window should pop like any other window because it's an option you have to do something, and it doesn't. So you're scrolling around here. You don't see anything happen. That's what you want to do. As you can see, it's clearing the page. It's clearing all the information that's already on the controller. This takes does take a little bit of time. It is not fast. Um, it's got, I mean, basically this controller is another computer. So basically it's trying to wipe out another computer, you know. There's a lot of information on these controllers, including the Fly Sky controller. Uh, you know, these are these are not a simple simplistic machine. Now, I actually got this second controller. Um, the gentleman that had it was having an issue with this one starting on its own. I have gone through this thing with a fine tooth comb. And I have found nothing. Now you see right on the screen it says, please restart your unit, remove batteries if necessary. Just remove your batteries. Just get rid of that if necessary. Type OK or hit OK. Unplug from USB. Let's give it a couple seconds to make sure it's completely down. I'd say 10 is good. Um, if you give it 10 seconds, you know, you definitely, definitely know it's restarting. And there we have a restart. Oh, and, and it's got it there. And we're good. I'm done. I'm updated. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and close the updater. There's no reason to have it open anymore unless you wanted to go back through and select the non crossfire version, uh, which we're not going to do. Why bother going back, right? Let's just close this out. Yes, I really want to quit. Now let's take a look at the controller. I'm going to show you what I mean about the batteries. So we're going to go to that center icon again. I, I lied to you. So it's 46 volts for the low, 48 volts for the high. I have played around with it for quite a bit. Um, a couple of the other UFPV pilots have played around with it. Uh, we've gone back and forth from saying 3.2 to 4.2 or 3.2 to 4.1. Uh, we've been going 3.0 to 4.1 and been doing really good on the battery voltage. So we just set that. Now I'm going to go down here to the battery low. Set your battery low like a 3.6. Um, so this controller will do a number of things. If you don't have it set this way, uh, don't need to turn this. I want to turn RSSI shutdown off. Inactivity for 10 minutes. That's another shut off. No, I'm just going to leave it like this. If you don't have it set that way, what will happen is you're going to be like me when I was testing these out, running them down to 3.4 volts, and this unit will shut off when it sees low battery. That's a safety feature. Um, when it hits 3.6, it's going to scream at you. Hey, I need new batteries, blah, blah, blah. You're good to go. Uh, with it set like this over here on the hardware page, it seems like the battery calibration does pretty good. So let's go over to another spot. Maybe it was there. No, it's here. So RSSI alarms. You have plenty of RSSI alarms. They're built into the radio. They work with Crossfire. They do not work with FlySky. We're waiting on FlySky to give us the parameters. They haven't done that yet because they're still working on it themselves. This is a new radio. It's pre-release. Sure. You know, you guys have had it for a little bit, but just... Give us some time. We will get that fixed. Um, but here's all your ranges you can set. Uh, it will give you low alarms, critical alarms, and uh, RSSI disconnected. Something along those lines. Um, and then it'll tell you when it's connected again. Now, I've been talking to a few guys, um, and they say LQ is much better than RSSI alarms. And they have figured out how to set those. I have not uh, messed with that. I mean, this controller is not set up for me at all. Where's my logic switches? That's mixer, outputs, curves. Don't care about curves. Um, logic switch. So they're setting them up in the logic switches. I don't know a lot about logic switches, but I do know I run. Uh, I reset my alarm. Oh no, that's with a. That's not with logic switches, is it? That's with a function, special functions. So I don't know anything about logic switches. I need to learn about that. Um, SB down is going to reset timer one enable.
Now, every time I hit that, it's going to reset it. Now, this remote, of course, no longer has a timer set up on it. I'll be setting that up. I set it for two minutes and seven seconds. So maybe two minutes and four seconds would probably be better. Um, so I'm setting up at the starting gate, and I arm my quad. The timer starts, and um, this is my arm switch. Of course, that has to be the middle. My timer starts, and by the time seven to four seconds is gone, you've got a really realistic... Uh, race clock right in your hands and this will tell you hey I've got 30 seconds left in my race you know basically I wanted to say hey you got 30 seconds left in the race if you want to win you need to kick it up a notch you know that's what I wish it'd tell me but it doesn't uh, anyway you know so that works really good race is over I just reset it super simple um, but guys have gotten the LQ to work in the logic switch area I haven't played with that so I really don't want to talk about that much but you know um, that's it. That's all it took to up, upgrade this to the new Crossfire uh, controls. Um, because I don't have a module in, I've noticed I'm not getting anything, but right there's the button, Crossfire Setup. It is not a Lewis script. It is native to, the, to this controller. Um, it, it, you know, that's how it's going to work. There's no hitting Lewis scripts and basically doing a soft reboot and everything else. You just hit that, and you're going to be right there in your Crossfire controls. Uh, yeah. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to put a link to the the updater in the video. Uh, maybe not in the video as it's playing, but in the description of the video. And I'll post this up on Facebook. Uh, it's super simple to do. Like I said, just a few key points to remember. Take your batteries out to start with. You know, just take them out, set them aside, put the caps back on or don't, whatever. Um, but take your batteries out. Uh, when you get to that screen and you think you stalled, remember the screen I was telling you about? It says update TX. Click it. It'll go through its deal. It'll tell you when it's done. It'll tell you to restart, restart it. It'll go through one last little check at the bottom there, and you're good to go. Go ahead and go fly. Easy. Very easy. Um, anyway, I'll talk to you guys later.